Okay guys, welcome to the Bow River. I brought you guys out here because I want to show you some filters today. Now, a lot of people ask me, well, what's the point of having filters now when I can put my camera photos right into Photoshop and do everything that way? Uh, Photoshop, to be honest, has, has restricted the use of a lot of filters, especially things like color correction filters for white balance. That we can all do in the camera, but there's so many filters that it's just so much better to shoot and have on the lens at the time. You'll get better quality if you use them. There's a lot of effects that filters can do that uh, Photoshop just cannot touch properly. And at the same time, it saves you time having to sit in front of your computer and do all that work. Now the first filter that a lot of people get introduced to is the UV filter. Totally clear, you guys can see me right here. No light loss and honestly no real quality loss to speak of. At the store we carry a few brands of filters. We don't carry any cheap garbage, they're all good. Right now I've got a Rodenstock filter which would be an example of one of our higher end filters. I like these higher end filters because they're built very very strong, they can take a beating, they don't bend or deform and you'll tend to get a little bit less reflection from bright sunlight which we do have today. Now UV filters Simply screw on the front of your lens and generally you can just leave them on there. You can just use them as a protective filter. It's that extra layer of glass, that cheap insurance in case you drop the lens or you get fingerprints or you scratch the front. It protects those expensive lenses. I have seen it save lenses that have been dropped onto the ground. Filter smashes everywhere but the lens is okay. The other one I want to talk to you guys about right now is a polarizing filter. I'm going to take you to the river and we're going to go have a look. Come with me. Okay. Now, when we're talking about polarizers and what a polarizer does as a function, one of the most common things people like to use polarizing filters for is to get deeper color saturation and a darker sky. Polarizers have a unique effect that they can actually make your sky richer and more dramatic. I'm going to take a shot of the city skyline here and you'll see how it not only brings the glass reflections on the buildings down and deeper and overall color saturation gets deeper, but you'll see the effect in the sky as it changes. Now, polarizers don't do their effect equally all the time. It really does depend on where the sun is. If you're pointing your camera at a scene to get the most effect, you want the sun either right off your left shoulder like I have it here, or right off your right shoulder. If the sun's in the frame in front of you or if it's directly behind you, you're not going to get much effect. So do watch for that. Try to position yourself at such an angle that you can make the sun work for you to get a nice, even, strong effect. I'm going to show you guys here right on the live view function of this camera how this polarization effect works. Now, polarizers have a rotating mount. They're, they're, they've got a twisting mount. You simply just twist it with your fingers and you will see the effect happen right in front. Now, as I take my shots here and as I turn the polarizer, what you guys should see is that sky just gets gradually darker and then it goes bright again. You're basically turning the effect on or off and you basically just adjust by sight until you're happy with the effect that you're getting. The other thing you guys want to look for is notice how reflections and glare on the buildings lessen the glass reflections start to lessen and we get a richer, cleaner look. Other thing you guys want to watch with polarizers when you are using them, they do block a few stops of light, usually around two or so. So do keep in mind that when you put a polarizer on, outdoors in bright sunlight you won't have any problems, but in low light conditions or dark conditions, it is going to, it is going to drop your light levels. Okay, now we've got our scene here where we're shooting the water. I want to show you what else a polarizer can do. Polarizers are great not only for that dark sky, but also for eliminating reflections. For example, right here on the water, now we've got the sun coming straight in the camera, we're getting all this beautiful glint on the water, but we also get reflections of the blue sky, and I can't really see the stones underneath the water. When I use a polarizing filter, first off, it's going to tone down the sunshine. You'll see it as I do the effect here. It's going to tone down that sunshine and make it more controllable, and it's going to let me see right through the water. So now I can see the rocks, I can see more detail in the flow of the water. I don't just get this blue haze masking everything. The rocks in the shot as well will also avoid some of that glare and look deeper and have more detail. So it's great anytime you're dealing with water or glass as well. The only thing that polarizers can't really control is what we call specular highlights. This would be something like the sun glinting off of a chrome motorcycle. It won't control those kind of reflections and it won't handle mirror reflections either. But any sort of glass or water where you get this, this double image, this ghosting effect, it'll get rid of that nicely. Okay, let's talk about ND filters next. Neutral density filters are very important in digital photography. They have an effect that you really cannot mimic nicely in Photoshop. This is really something that should be done at the time of taking the photo. A neutral density filter is a solid gray filter. It doesn't affect your color in any way. What their purpose is to do is to hold back light. 
It's to block extra light. It forces the camera to do two things. Either use a slower shutter speed in order to get motion blur, or to use a wider aperture so that you can use thin depth of field lenses in bright conditions. The first one I want to show you is the Solid ND. These are gray across the whole scene, so the photo is not going to change in any way as far as exposure in different areas or color. The whole purpose of this filter is to slow down the exposure, get a slower shutter speed. Now, the classic use of this filter is in landscape when you guys are shooting things like raging waterfalls and rivers. Now, with the budget that Jordan and I are using here for our videos, this is your raging waterfall in front of you. This is the uh, glorious rapids that we are going to shoot. But Hopefully, at least you guys will be able to see the effect, okay? Now, in bright conditions like this, if I'm normally shooting without an ND filter, my shutter speed is going to be very fast. It's going to be quick. And if I want to accentuate the motion of this water and I want to blur the motion of this water, a fast shutter speed is going to do the exact opposite. It's going to freeze it steady. It's going to freeze it still. I'm going to take a few shots here. I'm going to show you. When I put a neutral density filter on and darken the exposure, I can make my shutter speed progressively slower. The slower and slower it gets, the more and more of this water is going to blur and you're going to get an interesting effect. Now, for this experiment, we're also going to use a uh, Singray's Very ND filter. These are very cool. Normally, you guys are going to buy a neutral density filter in fixed stops, like a one stop ND, two stop, three stop, six stop, and so on. This is a great filter from Singray because with this filter, I can rotate it much like a polarizer and get anywhere from two to eight stops of neutral density easily. So now I can show you this, this effect as we go through the different levels and you'll see how the, the water gets progressively blurrier. Let's try this shot here. I'm going to take my first shot here. Now here we're getting about 13th of a second. When I take the shot, you guys can see on the screen, we're getting a bit of blur. The water doesn't look as sharp. We're getting a bit of that motion, but we can make this effect even stronger. Now all I have to do is turn the ND down darker, and I do have to compensate for it with a slower shutter speed, but again, that's exactly what we want. Shooting about half a second, we're now getting that water blur. You guys can look in the, in, the, in the mighty rapids of this raging river here. You can see anywhere that there's bubbles and a, a trail of bubbles, we're getting now just a, a misty blur. And I can go even further. Let's turn this ND all the way down to eight stops. Now I'm shooting this particular situation at four seconds, five seconds in that range. And when I take this shot, what you guys are going to see is that all the water takes on a very misty effect. Everything looks very, very soft, very, very smooth. We don't see any sort of, uh, any sort of water frozen in motion. It also works really well when you can still see solid stationary objects like the rocks on the outside. Then you get this contrast between flowing motion and solid rock.